Hi kids, it's Rowan again, and believe it or not, this is about the fourth or fifth time I've tried to shoot this for the Goth Tag. And it's the fourth or fifth time over several days, going on a week. Oh dear. So, this is the Goth Tag, question one. How long have you been Goth? Um, I'm not going to say the exact number of years, but since I was about 14, and I'm in my late 30s now, so do the maths. That means over 20 years, not quite 25. Question number two. Uh, how were you introduced to goth? And that would be through my brother-in-law, through my eldest sister, who is 13 years my senior. So he's about 13 years my senior. Um, maybe 12. He's from China, um, from Hong Kong. So, um... And they live in London, and I mentioned this in my introduction video, I believe. Uh, he got me into uh, Susie and the Banshees, and um, uh, Early Christian Death, Sisters of Mercy, all that lovely, lovely music. He's huge Susie and the Banshees fan. Um, question number three. What goth subtype would I describe myself as? And as far as music goes, um... I listen to a lot of what is what is even now retroactively titled um, call, called um, dark cabaret. So, like in the mid '90s, when I was little bitty baby bat, um, we just you know it was like you know sex game children, virgin prunes, um, Christian death with Jatan and Roz. Um, you know a lot of Roz Williams stuff. You know falls under that camp now. You know it was just their their sort of music. You know in the you know um, you know, sort of, you know, sort of jazz, sort of, you know, chanteuse, you know, um, you know, listen to a lot of Edith Piaf and Billie Holiday sort of goths. Um, now they call it dark cabaret, and I always come back around to that sort of thing. Um, as far as how I dress, um, I call it, um, I call it junk shop bohemian a lot of times. Uh, I go to a lot of thrift stores, a lot of antique stores. This here is, uh, vintage... 40s or 50s mink collar. Um, I actually think it might not be mink. Um, but, you know, it is vintage. It is vintage. You can tell from the fabric underneath it. It is quite old. I, I'm guessing 40s. It was labeled 50s in the shop. But, um, so, in a lot of vintage furs, a lot of, um, you know, my makeup is often... Um, influenced by uh, films of the 20s, so of course, you know, Amanda Palmer and um, Cat's Cab and who else is, oh yeah, Cinema Strange. Yeah, we call the Cinema Strange Death Rock through the late 90s, and they sound nothing like, like what you think of as, you know, Death Rock, which came out of hardcore punk, like, so like 45 Grave, and... Um, Shit, even early Christian death, it sounds nothing like, you know, most modern death rock. Uh, like, you know, like all that death rock revival kind of stuff, which is far more punk influenced. It, um, so yeah, I listen to a lot of, um, you know, the dark cabaret sort of feel and, you know, where that overlaps with the death rock-ish music. Um, but, you know, as far as fashion, I'm very much junk shop bohemian. Yeah. Uh, question number four. What do you believe is the basis of the golf subculture? And it always comes back around to the music and art for people. Um, there are times, you know, especially since the mid-90s, where it's been, you know, fashionable for young people to, you know, look all spooky and wear lots of black. And, you know, that cycles around, and it's fashionable for a bit, and then it dies away, and then it goes away. And, you know, the people who are always really into it, they stick with the mu they stick with it because they love the music of, you know, the actual underground subculture. They love the art that's associated with it, you know, so like Neil Gaiman, um, uh, Anne Rice, Poppy Z. Bright, who's now going by Billy Martin, yes, I know who he is. He and I have been, uh, have been friends on, you know, mostly through the internet for years and years and years. <laughs> So, you know, don't, don't, I was like, I know who he is, I know who he is, I know he's he now. In my mind, he's been he for quite some time, because, you know, I I remember reading all those interviews in the, in the late 90s when he was talking about, you know, being trans and just, like, not feeling a, a special need to transition at that time. 
So, uh, you know, so, you know, there's a lot of music and art and writing and all that associated it with it because, you know, um, you know, a lot of the music, you know, they were inspired by old Victorian Gothic literature and, you know, there have been, you know, Gothic literature revivals um, coming back around and this is just like, you know, so, yeah, music and art, um, it all comes back around to that and, you know, fashion is, you know, almost on the periphery but it's secondary to the music and art. Um, Question number five, what do you dislike about being goth? And I'm going to say, I'm going to say for now the fifth time, it's because uh, what I hate most is an extreme lack of prominent people who have to wear glasses and wear them full time. And I'm not talking about, like, I think Razor Candy occasionally wears her glasses because you know, she doesn't want to wear contacts that day or something. I'm like, I'm not talking about that. I am, I myself am low vision. This means, you know, I am, I, I can't wear glasses. That's basically what it means. It means I'm too fucking blind for contacts. Uh, I'm too fucking blind for contacts. I'm too blind to drive. I have, like, no real peripheral vision until... I want to say you're almost in front of me. So I can't see, like, off the side of my face to the range that most people can. Um, uh, with glasses, I want to say I've got about 2080 vision um, in my, you know, combined, I want to say it's closer to 2120 in my bad eye and 2040 in my good eye, if we're just going each eye separately, but and that's with glasses. Uh, combined, I'd say it's about 2060, 2080. So, um, so that, yeah, I'm, I'm too blind for contact lenses. I ha have to wear glasses, and you don't really see anybody who has to wear glasses and wears them. Um, I imagine there might be a couple who just, like, you know, they photograph you know, without them, and you know, meaning that they're blind basically while they're doing it, just because it's not fashionable to wear your glasses and be a goth. But oh well, that's what I have to do, <laughs> so I'm gonna do it. Um, question number six is, what do your parents think? And I love this question. Now the fifth time I've come back around to it in the reshoots. Uh, my parents have died. Uh, my mother died about. Five years ago, according to the obit I found, uh, she'd been out of my life since I was about 11. And my father died when I was 21. So many years ago at this point. <laughs> Over 15 years ago at this point. I'll put it that way. Over 15 years ago at this point. Let's, let's see if you can try and figure how old I might be. Uh, so, um... My father somehow was surprised. I, you know, when I was a little kid, like, my favorite film was Pee-wee's Big Adventure, um, you know, which was a Tim Burton film, and this sparked me into more Tim Burton films. So, you know, the fact that I went from Tim Burton films as a kid, like, even as a little kid, you know, I was, loving, I was in love with Tim Burton as a kid, and then I got into Susie and the Banshees, and I started dressing like, you know, Ros Williams. Somehow my father seemed surprised. You know, you park a kid in front of Paul Rubens every Saturday morning. Kid will do whatever Paul Rubens says, <laughs> whatever Pee Wee Herman says. I screamed for the secret word for the rest of the goddamn day till my mother threatened to backhand me. And yes, child abuse is very funny. <laughs> I don't think she ever actually did. I don't think we ever, we ever went that far to test and see if she would. But, um, you know, so you park a kid in front of Paul Rubens every Saturday for years, and then they get into Tim Burton movies, and then you have the nerve to be surprised when they turn out fucking weird, right? Eh. Uh, my mother had no opinion on the matter because, like I said, she was not a part of my life from the time I was about 11, so... Ah... Uh... Question seven. Eyebrows, yay or nay? You may think I don't have eyebrows, but I do. I get them waxed very thin. It's a very 1920s inspired thing. This is just what I do. I've been doing... Oh, gosh. Oh, my brow girl and I, we mentioned this a few months ago. I've been going there about two and a half years. Two and a half years she's been doing my brows, and I love it. I love it. So, yes, I have. I do have brows very thin brows, and I fill them in. Sometimes I overextend when I'm going for a more dramatic look, and that's why I get them so thin toward the back, but at the same time, I like having a little bit there so that 
<laughs> so that I have a guide when I'm doing them daily with the, with the pencil. Uh, question eight. Uh, favorite band. All-time favorite bands. I would have to say anything with featuring Roz Williams, obviously. Um, so, Roz Williams, uh, Virgin Prunes... Mm, excuse me. Um, probably Susie, but I'm not as enthusiastic about her as I once was, but still always get very enthusiastic about Rose Williams, uh, Virgin Prunes, and, um, oh, Nico. I've been getting very excited about Nico about the last 12 years. Um, Nico's why I'm learning harmonium. Um, but currently, um, I'm listening to a lot of, um, The Bedroom Witch, um, The Swine Lake. I think I don't think they're an active project anymore, but I bought their album on uh, Bandcamp, The Swine Lake. Um, uh, the beautiful music. Um, beautiful, creepy music. And Sapura Turnus. Uh, you know, I think I'd put Sapura Turnus in my all times. Uh, a friend of mine who got me into her when... Got me into, you know, Anna Varney and her work. Um, Oh, yeah, I'd have to say, yeah, that was around my 21st birthday. She, uh, she brought me, you know, my friend, she, um, bought me a Sapura Turnus album, um, Ich tot mich. And I, you know, I always come back around to support. In fact, like, my couple years I spent, like, no, I'm not a goth anymore. <laughs> most, most older goths do that, like, around the age of, like, 29. We're just like, nope, nope, we're done. <laughs> But then we come back around, it's like, I never gave up listening to Virgin Prunes, Ross Williams, or Support Turners. Yeah, that, you know, or Nico. But then again, Nico defies genre, in a sense. Uh, number nine, which would be opinions on Marilyn Manson. And Marilyn Manson has been very irrelevant for at least the last 15 years. And it's very sad that he's trying to blame the Columbine Massacre for the fact that shit about what he does anymore. And that's... that's sad. He's got nothing to do with goth, so I don't know why that's on here other than just to get people's opinions, I guess. Um, and number ten, uh, what were my baby bat days like? And that was so long ago. I don't remember much. Um, I don't remember too much about, uh, other than, like, I was a teenager, so I was a little asshole. All teenagers are, you know, are little dickweeds for a few years, and then hopefully you outgrow it, and I eventually outgrew it. Uh, how I dressed a lot of the time would be, um, if you've seen the sitcom Roseanne, and if you have cable. Hell, no, it's on Laugh now, which is, which is a, which is a local digital, um, affiliate. Um, th th you probably see a lot of episodes, reruns of Roseanne. You've probably got access to it somehow. Um, so Darlene Connor, as a teenager, you know, she, you know, there was the episode where she dyed her hair black just to piss off Rose Roseanne, which I always get for behind now because Roseanne bars a fucking turf, right? Um, so, and Darlene Connor, with the black jeans and the, you know, Neil Gaiman posters and the dark uh, plaid flannels. Um, that is very much how a lot of small-town high school goths dressed in the mid-90s. Uh, that is actually fairly accurate for mid-90s goth in the flyover states, you know, outside of, like, Chicago and... You know, um, you know, if you were in high school and you were a goth in the mid '90s, you probably looked a lot like, you know, Darlene Connor and David Healy from the, from the Roseanne television show because that's just that's that's what he had access to, more. You know, that's what we had access to was you know just some dark clothes, you know, kind of like a slacker, you know, goth, <laughs> I guess. Um, but yeah, that's you know. Uh, that's, that's my baby, that's what I remember of my baby bad days many, many years ago. Oh god, I'm so old. I'm so old. Alright, kids, um, 
If you haven't already, please click subscribe. Um, please, um, you know, donate to Patreon so I can keep my music going. I apologize again for failing to do a music upload this week because of crap and stuff. Um, oh well. Uh, let's, let's get to, uh, doing more things then. Alright, um, please donate, um, subscribe, and, uh, go check out Rowan Music, R-U-A-D-H-A-N, music, just one thing, um, dot bandcamp dot com, and I will go attend to my computer in the other room. Alright kids, take care, I love you.